chapters, the author finally comes to this conclusion, fear God and obey his commands, for this is everyone's duty. It appears that the teacher abandoned any hope in worldly pursuits and decided that glorifying God provides the only lasting meaning in life. Verse 1, this is out of the authorized King James, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. And that is, of course, a type of, of course, Jesus Christ being the king of the heavens and the earth from the east, from the west, from the south, from the north and preacher the high priest uh, arch pastor, arch bishop king and of course King Solomon and Shepherder is the type and shadow of the real kingdom of Israel that is fulfilled through Christ Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, this heavenly ascension, and rule and reign from heaven. Verse 2, vanity or vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. So, what does it refer to in verse 2 when it says, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Total depravity, that's what it is. So, in life, in the pursuits in life, are all total depravity, empty, pointless and meaningless. And the pursuit of life. The word man here in verse 3 is Adam, referring to the six day creation. What prophet hath a six day creation of all his labors which he, uh, which he takes under the sun? So everything is empty, pointless, meaningless, total depravity, without, apart from God and Christ, apart from God and our relationship and our salvation, our deliverance, our justification, our sanctification. And glorification, it's all pointless without God. And King Solomon realized this at his later reign, after all the wickedness and sin he perpetrated in life. In the beginning of his reign, he was a strong, morally committed Christian to the salvation is found in Christ. Then he pursued all the empty vanities of life. 
all the pleasures you could possibly think of. And the conclusion that he came to, that everything is totally deprived, empty and meaningless, and there is no profit apart from God. <coughs> See, and I'm no expert, but I know what the Bible says about it. about uh, our total depravity when the fall happened. And as I always said, I'm a, kind of a soft Calvinist. Not a hardcore Calvinist, but a soft Calvinist. And so we only do what is naturally in our sinful, wicked nature. And we pursue those carnal pleasures in life, searching to find meaning, truth and purpose, happiness, success and pleasure. And we have in our eyes, in our total deprived state and defamed image of God that we are created, we search, look around and we see as unbeliever we see uh, we pursue what uh, our proclimities desire, pleasure, carnal pleasures drugs, self-help books, communism, socialism, Marxism, radical leftist, liberal politics, uh, tree-hugging philosophy, global warming, philosophy, success, wealth, pleasure, clothes, designer clothes respect all these things we pursue and they end up being empty and a void meaningless pointless no happiness no joy no peace can be found through these pursuits, but yet our total deprived, defamed image of God doing what is natural, our carnal pleasures still pursue it, unable to make a difference, make a change, to get out of the rut of this mess. And that's exactly the point. that our Creator makes and some are elected some are elected to damnation and the vanities until they are completely destroyed the very non-elect and elect But those who are elected unto salvation through the resurrection and ascension and rule and reign of Christ are elected beyond this temporal world, this carnal world, and through the resurrection of Christ Jesus we are set free from sin and death and our vanities and our emptiness to a certain extent we have the power to 
continue to pursue the vanities or can or sue the purpose and will of God, which gives us happiness, which gives us peace, which gives us power, which gives us glory, which gives us sanctification and peace, can all be found, and joy can all be found in uh, the relation and person of Christ Jesus, elected unto the uh, very elect and elected unto a greater beyond this temporal plane that we live in in this second world age and heaven age because you know you look around and people are, are nuts people are crazy insane psychotic mental vain arrogant snobs uncaring heartless as the perversions of total depravity continue to increase wow I take that back So, the world is in the condition of Romans chapter 1. In the beginning, God gave us the potential to do evil. And by our free will of choice, we actualized sin into existence and thus made us slaves to sin and death totally deprived the image we were created in the image of God and then when the fall happened that image was defamed and it still it still continues that way but through the election unto salvation life through Christ Jesus that image is restored what is heathenistic Sex is on the mind of people all the time. Designer clothes, uh, positions, respect. I mean, all of this just is empty. And man pursues it, even though the light of creation, the light of conscience, and special revelation, the light of special revelation is there and we have only a glimmer but unable to respond to that light until unless God elects us to respond to that light the pursuits are going to continue to be void and nulled because people are looking for the real thing people try are looking for the real thing they need the real thing the God of the Bible where you can find true happiness joy success prosperity in line with what God communicates success and truth and prosperity is not in the temporal or carnal ways You have uh, Joel Osteen, Joseph Prince, John Hagee, Benny Hinn, etc., etc., all offering you fast food, consumer, utilitarianism, Christianity, which is a false occult that leads to nothing the name it and claim it calling things as though you're not the teaching that 
God calls you to be successful and rich in the terms of the consumer world. Empty, destructive theology.